Hi everybody, I'm Dave from Polypad, and in this Polypad Pointer video, I'm gonna share with you how you can use this Canvas with students to help them get practice in adding fractions with unlike denominators. There's another Polypad Pointer video where I shared some examples about how you can use these tools to help students explore and think about why common denominators are helpful when adding fractions. So go check that one out if interested. This one is more about a, a polypad where students can get a variety of practice. So I've built two fractions here with our random number tiles. I'll show you in a minute how to randomize them, but I wanna start with the example on the screen, 3 eighths plus 5 twelfths. So first I'm gonna change these fractions to 3 eighths plus 5 twelfths. I'll double click on this and I'm just using the arrows on my keyboard to move to the different fractions, 3 eighths plus 5 twelfths. And I'll build these on the number line with the fraction bars. So there is 3 eighths, and here is 5 twelfths. You'll notice on these fraction bars, when I click and drag, I get a copy of the fraction bar. So I've set these fraction bars to clone when moving, so students can't uh, delete them by accident. They'll always be able just to pull off a copy. So here's 3 eighths plus 5 twelfths. I might make an estimate of this first. You know, maybe it looks like uh, 5 sixths. So I clicked on the equation editor on the bottom. I'll type in 5 sixths. That was too big. I'll make this bigger. Uh, maybe 3 fifths is another guess that I might do. And that's too small. So it's somewhere between those fractions. The goal here, of course, is for students to think about common denominators to help them get to an answer. And again, go check out that other video for how they can explore that on Polypad. Students might want to use the option in the action bar to rename the fraction bars. So I'll click this on 3 eighths, and I see that goes to 16 And I'll click this one here, and that goes to 24 And what I would want students to do here is keep track of their work. So I'm going to click on this question. I hit the C button on my keyboard, and I'm just going to copy that question of 3 eighths and 5 twelfths. I copied it a second time. And I'm going to change this to 6 sixteenths and 10 24ths. That's what I first have changed them to. And I want to confirm that that's accurate. So I'm going to take this, hit the C button on my keyboard, and bring it over here to make sure those are the same. And in fact, they are. So 3 eighths and 5 twelfths is the same as 6 sixteenths and 10 24ths. I don't have common denominators yet. I'll hit the rename button. Oh, and that's really nice. I see now that they're both in 24ths. So that 3 eighths, I'm going to pull up the 3 eighths again here just to get this on the number line. I'll make this 3 eighths. And I see that 3 eighths was split into three pieces. And in the 24ths, each eighth was split into three 24ths. So that's 3 24ths, another 3 24ths, another 3 24ths. So that becomes 9 24ths. And I hope when I hit return, it stays balanced. It does. If I counted wrong, for example, and I got 10 24ths, I'd see that it's not balanced anymore. So I know that that is 9 24ths and 10 24ths. I'm going to make a copy of that and bring it down here just to keep track of my work. I'll do the same and put it over here to try to find the answer. So that is going to be 19 24ths. Let me see if that's balanced. Indeed it is. So I found the answer to this first question. It is 19 24ths. Cool. I'll hit delete here. Uh, delete my fraction bars and do another example. So now to make another example, I'm going to click and drag on the green random number tiles and click the randomize action at the bottom. Uh, I got 1 9th and 3 eighths. So I can keep my 3 eighths and change this to 1 ninth and change this to 1 ninth as well. I could have just copied it if I wanted to. Let me build this. So here is 3 eighths and a ninth. And again, I can make an estimate. Maybe that's a half. Let's see how that compares to a half. Oh, a half was too big. So the answer is slightly below a half. And what's nice here is that when I use the option in the action bar to rename the fraction pieces, I get 16ths 
and 18ths, not common denominators. I get 24ths and 27ths. And then I get 30 seconds. And it stops at 27 ths. I deleted a little bit to see those numbers, right? I could I could zoom in. Certainly that would have been a better way to do it. But there they are, 30 seconds and 27 ths. I'm not getting common denominators with the rename action. On Polypad, fractions are only renamed up to 30 seconds. That's why you can see 3 eighths stopped at 30 seconds. So here's an example where students would need to think of the common denominators on their own. And so we could get to the point where we on the on the balance scale here let's see what's this going to be uh 70 seconds so uh, i think it's 27 70 seconds plus 8 70 seconds let's see if that's balanced it is great so i'll keep track of my work by copying this and bringing it down here let me copy that again and then i could enter in my answer uh, of 27 plus 8, I think it's 35, 70 seconds, let's see, 30, 35, yes, that stays balanced, so now I have found the answer, and I can do another one. I think on this Polypad canvas, I put six spots for students to show their work, two twelves plus four six, that option to rename the fraction bars would be helpful on that one. Uh, five, six, and four elevenths. The rename option is not going to be helpful there. So on this canvas, I set the numerators to be one through five, a random number one through five, and the denominator to be a random number six through 12. So you're assured to get a proper fraction, some that will have a common denominator of 32 or less, and some that will be above 32. So as students scroll, there are six blanks for them to fill in and keep track of their work. They can save their polypad, they can share it with you as a teacher. Um, on our YouTube channel, one of the playlists is called Tutorials, and one of the tutorials is called Changing Polypad Settings, where you can learn how to fully customize a polypad like this. Here, when I click on, on the random number tile, all I have is the option to randomize it. I turned off the ability to change the range of numbers that will appear for students. Uh, that range, I changed it, and then I turned that option off. So if you're interested in learning how to make a polypad like this for students, here on the fraction bars, it's set where I always pull off a fraction bar. If I click on this and hit delete, I can't delete it. It is uh, stuck that I can only make copies of it. And there's no tile sidebar. All of the tiles that need are right here on this canvas. I hope this video was helpful. I uh, would love to hear in the comments how you use these tools on Polypad to help students think about exploring adding fractions. Thanks for watching.